Hello, and thanks for coming back on this Wednesday, the 20th of September 2023. Uh, as yet, we're still waiting to hear from Unity on what they're going to be doing. I think they probably will roll back their changes on per install um, uh, license fees. So good on them for doing that. I think they're going to get a lot of stick. I know I know people like to be outraged these days, uh, but Unity are rolling it back, so we should give them the credit where it's due because, you know, I think they're comment here. We heard you. We apologise for the confusion. So they're saying they're sorry, effectively. So, but of course, Unity's loss is Godot's gain. And I'm hearing they're getting funding and um, you know a lot of a lot of positive press right now in Godot, which is great news. And um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to create a full game. It'll probably be over a couple of tutorials because uh, it's fairly fairly. Um, involved but it will be you know it'll be it'll be a full game i've seen quite a few games that have gone out recently that have been quite short and don't cover a lot of stuff this is going to cover a fair chunk of the way godot works um and so it's going to you know say so it's going to do things like uh, state patterns and stuff which we will come on to in, in a little while uh it's called mastics or we can you know um, there, there i think there are a few names for this game and here is my unity version that i wrote over a year ago the general rule is that um you mustn't take the last match. Okay, if you're left with the last match, you've lost. You you must take one, two, or three, one or two or three matches, and you and the computer then goes and does the same, taking one, two, or three, and the person with the last match is uh, sorry, whoever's left with the last match is the loser. Okay, so I'm going to play this now, and then I'll get down to the uh, to the end, and we'll see see who wins. Shall we? So I'll just play this now and then uh, I'll fast forward to the end. Okay, so here we are. We've, we've got nine matches remaining. Uh, how many would you like to take? I'm going to take three. Let's take three now. Um, let's see what the computer does. I know what the computer's going to do. I've played this game a lot. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, we can go full screen, by the way. we do this, though. Kind of cool. Kind of cool in HIO. Um, and we'll take... Let's take two. Let's take one. Leaving four here. You can see some anti-aliasing issues. I didn't really focus on that for this game. It was more about getting the game written and, and using a good kind of set of standards. And there we go. The computer's won because it's left me with one match. Okay, so um, that's the idea of the game. We'll do this little effect at the start as well where the matches drop in Godot. Um, ironically, um, Godot is not as good as Unity uh, for WebGL right now. It doesn't support things like Shadows, which is a little frustrating. Uh, but... That's not what we're talking about. So we're talking about getting a game written. Um, we can worry about making it look good later on. All right. So without further ado, let's get over to Godot and create a new a new project. Now, you can see I've already been kind of working on this because like, I do try I do try and work for you guys. <laughs> so we'll call this Matchstick, um, Matchstick Tutorial. Matchstick Tutorial, and we'll put it in slash Godot. Please be kind. Click on Create Folder. Um, and we'll use the meta, um, metadata of Git, and all that really does is actually create a couple of files that Git can use to uh, to define uh, what a new line character looks like in in um, Godot's editor, and I think some files to ignore. So it doesn't really well. This is well. This was it is the metadata. It's the attribute files that Git needs, but it does no more than that. And I do have a tutorial on how to version control your software in your game. So 
do take, check that out if you get a chance. Uh, we're going to go for compatibility mode again because we want it to run on WebGL. So we're going to export this to HIO at the end. Um, we're going full in here. This is quite a project. Uh, like I say, it'll probably be broken in maybe two or three parts. Um, so I think that's all we need here. We just click on click create and edit. And we are going to get off. I think before we start kind of you know getting into the nitty gritty, we probably need to define what a match stick looks like and, a, and we'll create a surface that the match stick can drop onto. So let's create a match. So let's do a 3D uh, scene for now. It's going to be node 3D there, but we're actually going to change the type. So if we right click change type to rigid body 3D, there we go. <laughs> Don't accidentally do rigid body 2D, which is what I keep doing. So rigid body 3D and then click on change. Okay, and we'll just we'll call this matchstick. Makes sense, right? And we'll save it if you just do Control S. Um, it's already asking us. It's already kind of worked out that we should call it matchstick. I think what we might want to do is create a folder for this, and we'll call this. We'll create an assets folder because this is an asset, isn't it? And it, I'll put it in there. So say, let's say, and I actually will give this a capital M. I like to use uh, you know, capital letters for this piece here and all lowercase with underscores for um, for the code. Right, so we've got a, um, uh, a rigid body. We've called it matchstick. You'll notice there's a warning here. This node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. We need to add a collision shape. Well, we will. Don't panic. But first of all, let's add a matchstick. So we'll add a couple of boxes, uh, one for the wood and one for the red bit at the top. So we'll just add a child node. And we'll put CSG box. These are the kind of the uh, default um, meshes that you can use here. CSG box. We'll click create, uh, and we'll, we'll call this wood, something like that. And then oh, if I'm keeping honest to my word, I'm going to put a double capital W. And over here on the size, we'll make it a rather silly 0 0.1. We'll make it a meter high for now, and then 0 0.1. Right, so that's obviously a huge mash stick, but I don't think it matters. There's nothing else in the scene, so apart from a floor for it to land on. So I think that's fine. And we'll also add, oh, let's just duplicate it, shall we? Control D, and we'll call that the strike, which is the bit at the top. And we'll just make that 0 0.2. And if I just click on the transform here, and if I move this up, I'll be able to work out where to put it. Uh, I'm going to say that's 0 0.6 by the looks of things. There, and we want to want to give this some color. So let's just click on the strike here. We'll click on geometry and then material override. New standard material. Click on that. Click on albedo. Color. <laughs> this is one thing I, I, I'm not loving uh, in Godot. It's kind of like you have to sort of dig down into the menus to find stuff. But let's give it a relatively look, good looking red-ish there. Look, something like that's fine, isn't it? Click OK. And then we'll click on this bit. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll click on geometry. Material override, new standard material 3D. Click on that, click on albedo, click on the color, and then, and then we'll find a brownish. Um, well, that's not really brown, is it? Um, it's brown. There, that's quite good, isn't it? That's quite a good brown. Somewhere about there. And then we'll click on that. And that's our, that's our match. What a glorious looking match that is. Um, but at the moment, it, as this match is complaining, it doesn't have any sort of. Uh, uh, collision on it so it's just gonna it has nothing to identify as a you know where the where it collides with other objects so let's add one so let's just right click here and we'll click add child and we'll add a collision shape collision shape 3d all right so this is what holds various collision types and this the, the mash stick's happy now the rigid body's happy but collision shape 3d is not happy and that's because we've created this 3d but we haven't actually told it what type of shape we'd like our collision uh, to be and we want it to be a new box like so and we should be able to work out the um, size shouldn't we click on the box again and you click on the size here just be careful here that you don't use the scale to define the size of the um, collision shape, which is an easy, you could easily just go 0 0.1. Uh, that's just done all three, isn't it? You have to unlink it, and then uh, one and 0 0.1. You see what I mean? So it's very easy to assume that you've actually created, but I think that gives very um, uh, unpredictable results. So it's actually up here in the actual collision shape you would do it, and we know that's to be, we know that's 0 0.1 there. I think that'll be 1.2 then. And that's going to be 0 0.1. And it's down just a touch. So we just move the transform of it here. And I'm guessing that's going to be uh, not the rotation, the transform, but position on the Y, 0 0.1. Great. 
what a match that is a match <laughs> that is the match to beat all matches uh we'll save that and we'll call that and we know what we can do is we'll create an environment for that match to drop onto so let's just click on plus again click on 3d scene this is a no 3d and we'll just call this something like world shall we and then this is going to be our amazing looking location where the matches are going to fall and we're going to play our game. So we want to add a, a surface for the matches to drop on. So let's do that. We'll add a child node. Again, it's just a CSG box, but it's going to be a much bigger one. Um, we'll make the size, what, so make it 20 meters by, it doesn't have to be very tall, right? But we'll make it 20 there as well. So it's 20 by 20, nice and big. There we go, lovely. And we just have to turn on use collision here, otherwise... Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, show you, I'll actually show it to you now. Let's just, under our assets, let's add our matchstick. Let's pop it on, and we'll just, under the matchstick, we'll just drag it up a bit. Um, and then we, if we click on play, um, uh, so, oh, sorry, yes, the uh, de default scene is our world. We need, Let's just save it, shall we? Control S, and we'll save this as world. What I might actually do is create a folder for it as well. So let's go back up here create a folder called scenes and we'll put world i don't think I, I don't think there's going to be any more scenes than this one in there um but so if we now now we uh we've saved it yeah and we'll click on play it should again we'll say select current as the scene we want to use and that's what we get absolutely nothing so that's great isn't it and the reason for that is we don't have a camera uh nor do we have any lighting so we should sort both of those things out now let's add a camera um, again, there's, there are better ways to do everything I'm doing. Now. There's a more kind of, you know, what, do you, what do you call it, standard way you know, that you might want to create this stuff. But for now, I'm just going to create the uh, camera, drag it, pull it back this way. Uh, what you can do is, well, you can click on the little preview here and it will show you what it looks like. And that, for me, is near as damn it perfect. What I might just do is if I click on transform here and just play with that a little just so that that drops down there we go so we can see kind of the full surface i think by the way this box here and let's just uncheck the preview that's the floor isn't it and we want to add a geometry node for that let's make it a dark green let's add a material rather uh, uh we'll make that again we'll just click on here balbedo color get a greenish sort of color oh make a bit darker maybe there and we can uncheck it uncheck it there we go that's what it looks like right so we've got our match up here we've got our green surface here so now if i click play okay we can't see it but <laughs> let's add a light shall we can we add a directional light as well so we'll add child node uh, light and we want a directional light 3d which is this one which is effectively the sun um is what is, is what this is meant to represent so if we click on create here um drag it up and then angle it downwards and that'll sort of pretend it's the sun all right it doesn't matter where you put this it's like an infinite rays if you use unity you'll be very comfortable with this um th this has an infinite number of rays pointing down it, it, it imagine it to be like the sun it's not like a spotlight or anything like that where you would um yeah it affects just the area it's at it's just a this is going to come down from that you don't usually have one of these so now if i click play it's just sunk straight through did you see that? I'll just do it one more time, just in case you, in case you missed it. Uh, keep an eye on here. There you go. It's just gone straight through the floor. And that is because our floor needs to hide that and have a collision. Um, collisions are um, fairly straightforward, I suppose. you just got to get your hang on. Look at all these masks here and layers. Um, I won't go into detail about them, but let's just say if you keep everything on one for now, you'll be fine. This is the uh, the collision layer is what this object um, kind of is on, and the mask is what it's listening on, right? So if any other uh, object is on uh, collision layer one, uh, then it will be this will be listening for it. If I did that, if I turned it off, then it won't be listening for that uh, for that object. And I, I think that if I go to my match stick, I'm not sure if it's on this bit. Here we go. Click on collision. You can see it's sharing the same uh layer and mask and this is this is useful more for things like maybe when you're using the masks here for like an area to to patrol or something like that you might not necessarily um use it for physics you might use it for other things where you want to identify stuff in a certain area um you've got 32 of them and you can rename them and all sorts of cool things like that but i won't go into that right now have a play see what you can do uh, so now if we click play now i'm hoping this will fall to the thing and, and then drop to the ground. And there you go. It's a little small, isn't it? I probably could have brought it a bit closer. So we've got our match 
Um, yeah, bring it a bit close to the camera. Look, drop it down there ish. Okay. Um, Play. and now let's just do it again just one more time there we go you can see our match drops to the ground lovely and falls in there um we need to think about how we're going to design our game and this is where i want to start talking about states uh state patterns if you are familiar again with with game coding you're probably um very aware of game states and state machines um they're a very strong pattern of pattern that you know uh, i think it's called the the gang of four wrote a book about i'll find it here hang on I'll find it here. I think I wrote the uh, design patterns. This is the one. Uh, elements of reusable objects, uh, object-oriented software, 1994. It's kind of considered to be the Bible uh, of, of patterns uh, in terms of sort of its, uh, you know, the original, original. Uh, there's, been, there's, been, there's been others that have come since and amendments to it and what have you, but it's considered to be a very, very good book yeah, called The Gang of Four, like Gamma, Helm, Johnson, and Visides. Visides. Um, Read this book in a lot of uh, you. You mention this in uh, in certain circles, you'll you'll certainly strike up a conversation. Um, but the state pattern looks something like this, and those that aren't familiar with um, this sort of diagram, don't panic. Um, you have what's called a state, and that state um, will have subclasses. Okay, so you might have a uh, so you might have a, a very simple state that says handle me. Right, this is how we do it, and then you might have a state that says something like, "If this was a player, if this was an enemy, for instance, that you'd have a standard state called enemy state, and there might be a state that says chasing, um, sleeping, <laughs> walking, dead." Right, so things like this that they can have, and then and then you'd have a, a handler, the, the, uh, this handler here that says, "Yeah, just go and handle," and it doesn't know, it doesn't know what state that enemy's in, but it doesn't matter because the the the. The, uh, all it does is call handle, and then the appropriate handle gets run. Now, if you're not familiar with object-oriented software, don't stress. Um, it's it, that, that that's uh, it's it's just a pattern that uh, uh, that works well, and it's clean and easy to maintain and understand. I find again, I'm going a little bit of an old old man rant here, but sometimes people over-engineer stuff, and I think people create <clears throat> uh, states and patterns and blah, blah, blah for, for all sorts of reasons, and it gets too complicated too quickly, um, and I've realised that possibly my my ugly mug was in front of the um, the collision layers that I was showing you there, wasn't it? Let me just quickly just hide that there. So if I show you this, here's what I was talking about in those collision layers. Apologies if I um, if you um, if you couldn't see what I was talking about there. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So good clean code uh, and readable code is more important to me. Uh, you know, as long as it's straightforward and clean, I think that's the winner. All right. So please don't um, get you know see people creating all sorts of classes and subclasses whatever we don't need too much to worry too much about how this works in um godot because there's an there's an actual um uh, a library we can use called state charts and if we go to the asset lib section here we can click on state no, sorry search for state and there we go godot state charts i've been using this and it's very good um, it's got some extra features that we really don't need to use uh, for animation, things like that. Certainly not in this one. Um, and it's got basically it implements that whole uh, pattern for us so that we don't need to do it. And it gives it a little bit of a visual uh, representation as well. So we can see it in, in the Godot uh, inspector over here. So if we click on download, it's going to download it for us. And you'll notice there's a couple of things. So it gives you, it shows you the files that you might want to use. Now we, we want to use all of the add-ons here. So we'll click on that, and then if I just sort of, um, what's what I'm looking for? Close some of these windows. It's also got the state examples. I'm going to uncheck that. It's only the add-ons that we need. So if I just click on install, bang, and it's an asset, good old state charts installed successfully. So I'll click OK. It's throwing a lot of errors, um, not that many, but it's throwing a few errors. So what we'll just do is we'll quickly just make sure everything's saved, which it is, and I'll just do project reload current project. I should bring it back up. Pop, there we go. And we, now we can go back to 2D. There's no errors here, which is great. It does actually say about this Blender thing here. I need to sort that out. I think I, I was messing around with Blender at some point, and um, um, I think I tried to get uh, Godot using Blender. You may not see that error. Um, I will find out how to fix it and let you know. Or if you know, please do put it in the comments. That would be great as well. I want to double check that I am recording. Yes, I am. Always a slight panic on that one. Um, right, so... We've got our um, game ready. I guess we've got the floor. We've got a matchstick. Well, what do we need? Well, we need to define how to um, play the game. And let's just have a little think about what states this game could be in. So what I'm going to do 
And under the world here, I'm going to create uh, a child node, and it's going to use our new state, Godot state chart. So if I just type state, no, is it chart? Now, what's this is upsetting to me that um, that it's not there when you search for it. One second. I'm sorry, I've forgotten one key piece. Is that you need to go over to project project settings under plugins, and then you need to enable. Sorry, apologies, I restarted it. You have to go over here and enable them, otherwise it won't work. <laughs> Sorry about that. So let's try again. So we'll go right, uh, add child node, and there it is, state chart. So apologies for that. Right, so we click on there, click on create, and we've got ourselves. This is kind of like the sort of the manager itself, right? So under, under here, we're going to have a bunch of uh, states or um, that, 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 you know, that we're going to switch between depending on what state the game is currently in. Now, it does. there are different sort of styles of... Uh, of um, state patterns and um, the one i'm going to use here is what's called the compound state there's also this thing called a parallel state i'm not quite sure how that works but i guess i understand the concept that you can be multiple states at the same time we're not doing that so this is the one we're going to want here uh, these ones we're going to use in a minute so we're going to just going to click on here compound state uh, and we'll just we'll just call this we'll just call this a game state chart i'm going to keep that as a compound state and now it's going to complain it's going to say compound state should have at least one child state that makes sense, right? We're, we're, this is supposed to have uh, multiple states in our game at any one point. Uh, so, um, sorry, this means to have multiple states, but it should be one at any one point. So let's let's create a, a single state right now, and this is the one you want, atomic state. And the rest of them, I don't think I use. These are uh, we use the transition in a minute, but we don't use any of these other states, animations and animation tree states. We're just going to use this one here again, which is like a this is the state that we're going to be in at any one point. Right? So I click on here and we'll just call this init. All right. So init for initialization makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, this is where we're going to create our, um, our, you know, our, our matches, all that, all that good stuff. Right. So we'll click on here and what we'll do um, is we will, um, on the compound state, it's going to ask us what initial state we want to be in and we want that to be in init. This is where the game starts. We'll click OK. Now nothing happens now nothing's going to happen um we've got our states wonderful but it doesn't do anything it doesn't really it, it, it's um in fact, what we can do what you can do as well is you, if under the camera 3d if you click here you can add the debugger i thought state it's here somewhere it's weird that you can't sometimes search for certain words state chart debugger one second i'll find it apologies again I know I've done wrong. Uh, what you need to do is you need to attach a script to the camera 3D. So we'll click on here. Um, and no, 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 no. We're just, sorry, under here, camera 3D, we're going to click down here under script. We're going to do quick load. And then I'm just going to hide myself. So we just, let me just do that again. I'm going to click on the camera 3D and I'm going to go down to here and click quick load. And now if we look for debugger, state chart debugger, there we go. Click on open. And now I think if we go to preview, no, let's just click on play and just see if it appears. Um, script inherits from type control, so it can't be assigned to an object of type camera 3D. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on this, and so let's just just let's just remove that um, for now. Uh, under state chart debugger, I'll just oh, blast it. I'll just click on the here, and I'll just click on clear which is clear there we go so let's just ignore that for now i will remember how to do the debugger shortly um um but that will show us where um on what state the debugger is in once i've worked out how to get that going i'll show you but anyway so there we go so we've got our init state here but it doesn't do anything so what we're going to do is under our world i think what i'll do is i'll create another child node it's just literally going to extend node um so which is fine click on create there and then we'll call this uh, state manager or something like that state manager and this is going to have a script associated with it that's going to take the different states and do different things depending on what where we are right so let's just click on in it here um, and what we'll now do is we'll say in here if we go to node we have these things called signals now this state manager uh, in it um, atomic state has a various number of signals that it will, that it will send to anything it, this should be familiar with those that like you know, you know understand events in unity um, if it hits a certain condition it will fire these these states off right it will emit them is what it's called um, and you can listen out for um, these these states to be hit in other scripts 
Okay, so when it hits, you know, uh, state entered, uh, you can connect a different uh, script so that it's listening and ready to go. So what we'll do in our state manager, let's quickly create a script for it. State manager, we'll put, where should we put that? Should we, should we create a new folder called scripts? Let's create a new folder called scripts. Uh, create folder, scripts. State manager. It's interesting that that's got state manager. I thought that would be cool. That would go state manager. I thought it was supposed to do that for me. State manager dot GD. Uh, we don't need any templates, nodes, fine. Click create. There we go. This is a, for now, this, this script is empty. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a state manager. We've got a script in there. And what we can do in, in it now is we can, under the node here, we can say, right, when we hit the init state, which is what's going to happen when the game starts because uh, we've given it an initial state here. Well, under here, we'll say, right, okay, let's do something. So what we'll do is we'll click state entered. We'll right click it and say connect. And then it's going to offer us the various scripts that are currently on the tree. And the one we're after is our state manager script. So we just click on that there and then and it's going to create a method for us called on init state entered. <laughs> okay. And this, so this is going to get called as soon as the game starts because spinning back quickly to the inspector and um, compound state in it is the first state that it hits so state manager is going to get um, uh, the on, on init state entered uh, uh, event almost straight away so let's just quickly try this out we'll say print uh, yeah print hello yeah, let's just put hit initialization in its state entered and now if we run it Let's just stop it and start it. I would expect to say init state entered. So we're in a good place right now. We're in a good place. We've got our state thing working. It's actually saying, yep, I'm running. You can see a little, kind of little Wi-Fi signal there to say it's actually emitting signal. So um, good. We are in a good place. Now, it makes sense then that we need to spawn the um, uh, matches. So with that, what we'll do is we will... Um, create a link to the actual match itself so we'll say um at uh as it preload so we'll say at on ready var um matchstick matchstick scene should we say matchstick scene equals preload gosh it's giving us a lot isn't it so if i say matchstick i start to start with matchstick there we go lovely if just put m and it's not about it for us so what that's going to do is it's going to find this scene. Let's just hide all that lot and the assets there. Uh, actually, no, there we go. So it's actually going to load this matchstick scene here um, into a variable for us so that we can instance it very, very shortly. Okay, so that that's going to say, right, um, again, this is like a reference to a game object in, um, in Unity. I keep referencing these things. Um, okay, that makes sense. Let's just run it. I, I like to run often just to see if it throws any errors all good there in fact what we might actually do i might just see if it's worked as well so i'll just say print uh, matchstick scene press play and you can see just here so it has found a reference to it that would say nil or null or something if it wasn't there so that's really good news for us uh that it's found it. i've been having some problems getting the scene tree because it loads the scene tree in a certain order and um yeah it's been it's been it's been spinning me a bit um okay so what we want to do now is have a couple of, uh, we'll say at export var uh, min matches equals 20 and at export var max match, why is it, it's not matches, uh, ma max matches, max matches, which now I've got called max matches equals 35. Okay, I'm just making those numbers up. And if we go over to our uh, scene and click on state manage. I should you don't need to do that. You can see here it's by using the export we've actually got control over what those are. Now we could have put that export in there as well, I guess. For now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave that because we know that's the matchstick scene uh, that's gonna come in. Um it's just interesting that preview there isn't it as well that window I think it's showing us the thrust room there of where it's gonna gonna be. Um so we've got a min matches and a max match. Oh by the way we don't need this matchstick here anymore now do we? um that's actually just a uh that's that was just for our testing purposes we're actually going to instantiate them now properly so if we go back into our state manager script on in it what we can now say is we want to create a, a random number oh we'll have it yes yeah, so we'll have a variable as well that says um um we'll just 
for now we'll just say current match current match count of type int oh, we should do that as well shouldn't we just we'll just put these as int as well just so that we know what they are all right and this one's not going to be set yet but down here what we'll do is we will say um current match count equals rand i range okay so what if that wasn't obvious it's saying uh, you know create an integer between the range and we know what that's going to be it's going to be min matches and max matches right. and should we just for fun we'll just print out that current match count control s and click on play uh, there we go. Sorry, I was expecting the match to drop then, but it wouldn't do, would it? Uh, um, there we go. So we've got 20, and I'll just stop it and start it again. Hoping that'll be different. Number 21. Uh, i run it again. 23. Okay, fine. All right, it's going between 20 and 35. Those numbers seem very close to 20, don't they? I wanted to pick a good one. 26. Okay. I'm going to assume that random thing's working. <laughs> um, but we want we don't just want those matches to, be, uh, to show us a number. We want to actually create the matches, don't we? So let's create a for loop for i in range um and and i think what we need to do is just say current match count and what that's going to do is it's going to do from zero to current match count uh, and then what we need to do unsurprisingly is create an instance of the matches so we can just say i think it's matchstick scene dot instantiate and uh, we'll just we'll just give it a name here shall we um and also, by the way, just, just so you know, this is actually a type packed scene. That's for the type that, it's, uh, that it is. So we can actually just down here as well. We'll just say that as well. Say so, um, packed scene. Uh, sorry. So uh, match equals uh, of type. So we didn't say var, don't we? Sorry. Var match of type packed scene equals match dot instantiate and I think if we just we can try this I'm not 100% sure if we just say add child match that should do us that should do us um, cannot assign a variable type no to variable match with specified type pack scene one second sorry I'm being slightly dim that isn't a type match scene isn't it that, this is actually an instantiation of it there we go so that there we go that's better sorry uh, so let's just run this now. I don't. <laughs> this is going to have a bit of an odd, but it's it's worked. It's worked. Look, you can see it's created them. It's very small. <laughs> uh, so we might want to um, think about getting the camera a little bit closer and further down. But um, but it has created them. Uh, but the one thing, the slight problem is they're not high enough. So some of them have dropped through the ground. So we'll just say match dot global position equals and it says it doesn't always fill it for you uh, so we'll say zero comma i plus one comma zero All right so that's going to put them up in height as it goes down uh what have i done wrong expect the expression after that hang on i realize what i've done <laughs> been playing around match is a keyword so we'll call this um match match one what a prat if we call that match one there that will work now so what a, an ad child match one hey that's interesting that, that actually worked um at all i've been playing around with it for a while now there we go and this is actually a type of we know we know this was a rigid body don't we so we can actually put that in there as well we can just put in there rigid body 3d that's the type so okay, so apologies about that. Uh, well, you, you you didn't you didn't have to muck around for ages. I was thinking, why doesn't that work? What is? Why am I calling it that? I should have called it matchstick, shouldn't I? I thought I didn't want to call it that because uh, of the matchstick scene. Maybe we should, let's call it matchstick then, shall we? Okay, there we go. Matchstick, matchstick scene. There we go. That should now work. Now it's going to create the position. Uh, it's going to get higher and higher. So hopefully, if we watch that now. Where we go, we can see a whole bunch. Crikey, there we go. We don't know how many are there, though, do we? Uh, so how do we even know that? Well, the best way we can do this is to maybe put a little status up here to say how many matches are available to us. So let's do that right now. Uh, what we can do in our... Uh, let's go back to the 3D mode here. What we can do in our um, um, world node is add a, uh, a UI to it. So let's just we click here and add child node. We're going to add a canvas. 
um, and this is the um, canvas layer this is the root layer for anything that you're going to want to do that's going to be front and center on the screen right you know like your uh, your statuses you know you drag your, your toolbars at the bottom all that sort of stuff so you click on create here and that'll create a canvas layer for us and we're going to put a little text box at the top uh, so we'll just add child node that's we're going to add a label and we'll call this um that work there we go yeah and it's created pop the 2d scene up for us uh, and we will rename this to um match count label or something like that. match count label and we want this to span across we need to be in the center don't we so if i just click on here on the anchors and then do top center which is that one as well as over here if i just do horizontal alignment set that to center that makes sure the text is in the middle and it's on the tag uh uh on the text i've just put right, matches remaining come zero i do not like the size of that font I don't particularly like the font, but <laughs> we're not going to worry about stuff like that today. Please refer to my video on the main menus if you want to change the font and stuff. We're just going to click on the theme overrides, uh, font sizes. Basically, make sure the match count labels there. Theme overrides, font size. Let's try 32. That's better. That's better. Beautiful. All right. Now, obviously, this is just a stub. That's actually not going to do anything right now. But if we click play now. Okay. Well, it's a promising start. It's saying there's, there's zero matches remaining, but that's simply not true, is it? Uh, so how do we tell this label here that what the match count is or that the match count has changed? Well, what we can do is we can create a signal in our state manager. So if we just go into our script now, let's actually add a signal. Signal. Um, we'll say match count changed. Right. And we'll, we'll send, we, it's going to send a parameter, a uh, new match count. Of type int. That's good, isn't it? Right, so we got that. So this is the signal. And what we can do here is we can say match count changed dot emit current match count. Magic. Now, that's this is wonderful, but nothing's listening for this emit. And we want the match count label to listen out for that. So that any time this changes, any time this match change gets uh, emitted, uh, this is listening for it and ready to update. So what we'll do is we'll just add a script here uh, like that. Uh, match count label. Match count label. Um, uh, inherits label is fine. We want to put it in our scripts folder. It's putting it in scenes at the moment. So let's just go up a folder and then go to scripts. Okay, and click on open match count label. Make sure it's got the same thing. Maybe uh, click create. I think we're all good. And now we've got our script. What we can do back in our state manager, if I go to nodes now, you'll see that it's got this new statement, this new signal that we've created. And what I can do is I can just connect that. There is a you can do this in code, by the way. That's another way of doing it. But I quite like doing this way, so it's clear over there. Um, and then we'll go to our label. Here we are. We can click on that and click connect. All right, and this now has a method called on state manager match count change. <laughs> Catchy. Um, and what we'll do is we'll say, well, this is extends label. So this is, you know, we know this is a label here. So we can use some of the features here. We can just say something like text equals, and we can use text because that's a sub, that's a, uh, um, a field in label. Text equals matches remaining. Remaining colon percent d and this is something else you can do in um godot so you can do that and then you can just say percent new match count okay so that's going to replace percent d with the new match count uh, and that's it that's all we need to do and now this will get whenever um we we adjust the match counts we can just recall we can emit that uh signal and this will automatically update so let's give it a try i'm hoping Matches remaining 22. Glorious. I also, by the way, don't like the way those matches were falling. I might, I might just quickly do is just add a bit of a randomness to their rotation. So let's just go to State Manager here. Sorry, here. And when we're generating these guys, let's just say uh, matchstick uh, dot rotate x. Uh, yeah, x is fine. And then we'll just say rand f range. Let's just do rand f, and then we'll just and then we'll just say I think it's two two times pi, because we're using uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, radians, not not degrees. Right? So I think that's so you know pi is one eighty and two pi is three sixty. I think that's all. We, let's just try that and just see if that looks any better. Um, okay, I've got something wrong. Mastic dot rotate x. 
second. I think it's barely clear, isn't it? That it's saying that um, expected zero, but but received one. So let's just have a quick look. I must admit, I, as always, I'm round f. Let's just do round f range then. We'll just say zero uh, two times pi. Okay, let's try that. That might look a little bit. Uh, yeah, okay. Looks like we need to restart it. Stop and start. Okay, it's definitely definitely has randomised it, um, but um, I, I think I might I might just rotate it on the Y as well. No, on the Z. Just do the same here, Z. While we're at it, let's get the camera a bit closer, shall we? Um, undo the preview. Grab the camera. Let's drag it a bit more there. Angle it down a bit. Try play now. That's better. And we've got some decent rotation. Glorious. We've got we come back. <laughs> so we've actually generated our um our initialization phase, right? Um that is I think that's all we need to do here, isn't it? We don't need to do any more. We we've we've uh, updated the uh, status of the number of matches remaining and we've we've dropped them onto the um onto the table, or whatever you want to call it, onto the floor. So what we really need to do now is create a new state. Uh, called something like player turn. So let's just click on here, add chart. No, no, sorry. We need to do that. We need, we need to click on here, don't we? Atomic state. And we'll call this oh, F2 player turn state. Uh, player turn. Don't, don't put the word state on it. I'll tell you what, I, otherwise it gives the, it gives the um, uh, function names that could put state state in the function so it, it, it appends state to the actual method name to the function call so uh, so we'll put a player turn here and what so now what we need to do uh, we need to say well great in it's finished i now need to change the state to player turn and the way we do that is we add these what's called transitions you can see there's only one node of, there's only one little thing available here uh, when you're actually on the atomic states here you've got lots of options but here you've only got one so if we click on here this is a transition Okay, and I'm going to call the transition to player turn. And over here, over on the inspector, if I just click on the inspector here, it says, well, what, what, what state do you want to go to? Well, the state is going to be player turn. And an event that will uh, needs to be called for that to happen. And let's just call let's just put to player turn there. Don't worry about guards for now. In fact, you, we may not need to worry about guards at all in this uh, in this tutorial. Um, to play a turn, is, 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 I think, is all that we need. Uh, so I'll just save this. And now if I, um, under play a turn here, if I just click on node and then say state entered, we'll just add a connect here. And that's also going to be on the state manager. It's going to call on play a turn state entered. Perfect. And we'll just for now, we'll just say print uh player turn state entered now it's not going to do anything it's not going to enter that state yet because we haven't fired an event to tell uh the, this thing to change it so you have to you have to give you have to send event here to player turn so if i just control s this now let's just click on play make sure it all kind of compiles and looks fine in its state entered you see so it's not done anything we've got some debug errors here uh let's just have a little look um, and we've got a lot of them, a lot of them. And I think the reason for that is because we don't have it inside the um, tree yet. I'm, I'm going to fix this shortly. Uh, this is a bit annoying. I will we'll find out what the error is and I'll have it ready for the next episode. I think it's um, a fairly straightforward uh, element that you can we can fix. I'll, sh I'll show you how to do that. It's, it may even be that if we just move the state manager, what's happened? What have I done? I've moved the state manager as a subclass of init. There we want to be there. Let's just move that to the top and just see. I can't guarantee that's going to make any difference, but let's try. It's done the same thing. Okay, I will play around with that and get that working. I can. I, I do remember. Oh, that match has fallen off. Look. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I will get that working shortly. But don't worry too much about the errors right now. Okay, so we need to fire a uh, an event that will tell. Um, the state manager to change to the player's turn. We've got this transition here uh, to player turn. So let's just put here, after this is finished, we'll say, um, 
so uh, yes, yeah, so this is in the state manager, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we can say, um, let's put a reference to it, shall we, up here? We'll say var, uh, on ready var, should we say at on ready var? Come on, at on ready var um, game state, ch game state chart, yeah, game state chart equals um, dollar. Well, if I just game state dot dot slash do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna cheat rather than do that I'm gonna just grab it you can do this we can just grab it here click on that drag it in and then hold control after you started dragging at least that's what I do and there we go we've got dot dot slash okay so that's the syntax dollar quotes okay and now we can say down here now that we've got a reference to it we can say game state game state chart come on help me here chart dot um send event hang on a second yes it's send event oh maybe you come back in event brackets quotes quotes and let's just send that event that's just new line there as well uh look at our transition here that one there is the event we want control c click on that. Now the reason this works, by the way, in fact we could even put it here, um, is what's called duck typing. Um, you wouldn't get away with this in some languages, but here it's fine because it's saying, well, okay, I'll trust that um, send event exists under this variable that you've created up here. But what I might just do is I might just change this here to um, to state chart if it'll let me. Yeah, and that might help it let, uh, work out what this is all about here. So now if I press Control S and now if I click play. It's worked. It's absolutely worked. You can see it's actually done init state entered there and player state turn state entered there, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, one thing that I thought might be uh, relevant here is the fact that, well, it's gone straight to the player turn, even while the, um, so the matches have all been created, but um, it's gone straight to player turn. Now, so what we can actually do is we go on to here, you can see there's a delay in seconds there. So why don't we make that something like four seconds, three seconds, something like that, just so that it, that, you know, the um, the matches are still falling and this this game state chart handles it for you and you can see it hasn't done it yet but there we go player state entered lovely and what we can do from there is we're going to start controlling some number of buttons down here but that is for episode two i will check this into godot into uh, git and uh, i will tag it so that we you know which uh, tutorial it is um i hope this made sense please comment uh, I, I would love a like. I'd, I'd truly love a subscribe. I'm getting very close to 500 subscribers. It's terrifying. Uh, the response has been amazing. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching so far. I will push out the next episode pronto, pronto, and we will get this game written and onto HIO so you can impress your friends. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then, all the best.